Hello, Ian Forrest here with my 12th video. It follows hard on the heels of my last one because certain aspects of my history and knowledge coincide with current concerns widely reported all over the UK media. This video, video was meant to have accented relevance to my personal situation, but I can conveniently combine the two if I am quick. There will be some duplication for which I apologise, but I am striving to stress those parts of my knowledge for the benefit of all UK citizens whilst clearing away the mountain of detail put upon me by my enemies who want to try and bury the relative simplicity of their wrongdoing. Let me start by referring to an interesting article in the newspapers from a reporter of one of them who complains that his has tried to play down the importance of a high street bank who has been caught in tax avoidance schemes. He claims that the newspaper is acting with vested interest in trying to protect the bank which is a significant customer. That reminds me of my entry into the UK 25 years ago seeking justice and restitution. I also recall an expression my young day when trying to solve a mystery. Toujours cherchez la femme, always look for the woman. I'm glad to report in some ways, but not others, that this has been overtaken by suivez l'argent, follow the money. It took me 10 years of assiduous chase to realize that the judicial system did and still does protect the banks at all costs, usually ours, from financial claim. Certainly litigant minnows don't stand a chance. This was blatantly revealed when I was chasing Sir Fred Goodwin's bank for brazen criminality and loss. The judiciary cheated me at every step. No wonder we had a banking crisis. After that, I discovered another layer of corruption in that they can hide behind the memorandum of understanding between the judicial system and the police, which enables them to decide in secret who will be prosecuted or, more importantly, will not be. Which leads me to another feature of the news, namely, why have not the UK tax authorities, HMRC, been prosecuting alleged tax dodgers? Which goes hand in hand with the sterility of action against bank officials. The answer to both of those lies in the contrived UK separation of jurisdictions into civil and criminal. HMRC can only recover monies through the civil courts, but therein, however obvious, criminality must not even be mentioned. By contrast, if they go to the criminal courts, then this costs money. They might get a conviction, but no compensation. However, do not forget, in the background, there is that small band of people behind the scenes who will put a block on presentations to the criminal courts. The leaders in this, of course, are the judiciary themselves. So what is the point of wasting time and money, says a range of outside observers, including many, many politicians, who granted the judiciary to write their own power permit in the first place? Ah, also add to the above, suivez le pouvoir follow the power, unfettered, unaccountable, and very effective for them. Incidentally, my positive suggestions to correct the unjust judicial structure, let alone the many people within it, is set out in my video 10. Let me now move on to another couple of features which in their way are more important. I have set out a very brief summary of my history over the last 25 years in my video 8. Within that you will find that I struggled on, still trying to get justice and financial restitution, which has, with modest interest included, added up to approximately £10 million for the first theft and £12.5 million for the second. Then there are the many millions of pounds to add for costs and damages most of which are at the door of the broad judicial system. After a while I had recorded history of my plight in the civil courts. Following what had been adjudged a finality of action, I was entitled to report much of the past detail. But this exposure did not please certain judiciary, and they conspired with two crooks to silence my legitimate reporting in exchange for their impunity and immunity. I was to sign a confession for all this, but upon my refusal, I was put in prison for contempt of court. It reached the Civil Court of Appeal, by which time I had been invited by that office to submit 
a 300-page bundle of financial claim and correction. By then, the exchange gagging of me had evaporated after I had cried wolf to many senior people. But the two crooks wanted their immunity in earnest. I have described what went on during that hearing, the last book of my autobiographical trilogy. My bundle had been rejected by secret hearing and secret decision by Lord Justice Moses, Moore Bick and Lord Justice Mumby. And they changed the duration and purpose of the hearing by utter lies. Further, Lord Justice Moses told me that a judge's order is superior to the truth. And they sent me back to Queen's Bench for re-imprisonment. Whilst incarcerated, they had already made arrangements for me to be sectioned into a mental home. I was only saved from this by intervention from my short-term solicitor. I returned to her a bit later. But you know, the worst part of all this is that the judiciary and politicians granting them their power have blocked any chance of us UK citizens avoiding the injustice and damage caused by all this from what Churchill granted us in 1952 through the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Through the Human Rights Act 1998, the Labour government granted the judiciary all control and outcome of our rights, pretending to be a reflection of the European Convention of Human Rights, which has produced an iron ceiling against us with no appeal possible for real justice and correction with the police, politicians and many other colluders being part of a swathe of injustice, which no less produces many other detrimental side effects, such as inequality. Please note Church of England bishops. They are party to gifting all this power to a few hundred unaccountable human beings who hold our rights and justice to ransom. Meanwhile, my enemies have not given up on my complete destruction. I am in imminent danger of further imprisonment, but I'll have to cover that in my next video. However, I will end up by a bit of news, as it were. Since my escape so far from being sectioned, my solicitor's business has been closed down and all her documents removed, clearly hoping to obliterate my records. But not so successful, luckily. She kept my papers at her home, and I have been looking through them. Therein is the correspondence where the official solicitor's office is complaining of her acting for me, usurping their role as guardians of me, the mental case. But it also gave me the first chance to read the transcript of the Court of Appeal hearing, according to them. In that, even... Judge Moses says, and I, and I quote, this is the, uh, the official document. Here it is. This is, this is dear Mr. Moses. He, it's me, says, the serious allegations he made and published against them are the truth, and it was not open to the courts to deprive him of the opportunity of defending his right to tell the truth. Today, in my view, he should be disabused of that version of the law. It is not the law of the land. Really. Remember a long time ago, there used to be matters such as morality, honesty, integrity, duty, and, oh, the truth. That is the man who now heads up Ipso, the press regulation body. Lord Justice Munby has fame for decrying secret courts. And don't forget Lord Leveson, who's in charge of Queen's Bench, bench from where they dispense gagging orders, often in secret, and that's prison for miscreants who disobey their orders and version of the truth. Freedom of expression? Forget it. Food for thought? Food for action, certainly. You can see all my other videos on YouTube and Twitter, and also the source of the publication 
of my autobiographical books. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time.